right what do you see here you see a beautiful monument right so if you know this is the tallest stone tower in india and do you know the name yes you're right this is Qutub Minar. This is the tallest stone tower in India. So for your very kind information, this is made of marble at the top while red sandstone at the bottom. But what exactly is the red sandstone? It is a type of sedimentary rock. Yes, if you remember, sedimentary rock is the second type of rock that we find on the Earth's lithosphere. So let's learn about the second type of rock. So how exactly were these sedimentary rocks formed? So agents like wind, rain and flowing river carry these sediments along with dead plants and animals from one place to another and they got eventually deposited on the seabed. So over the years, they got deposited in layers and due to compaction and cementation, they form sedimentary rocks. So we must remember that sedimentary rocks take thousands of years to form. So the word sedimentary is derived from the Latin word sedimentum. Now what does sedimentum mean? Sedimentum means settling down. So as we have just witnessed in the video that the deposition of the sediments took place in layers. So they were settling down in layers and therefore the term sedimentary has been given to these types of rocks. Right? Also from this very particular point we must understand that the sedimentary rocks are called stratified or layered rocks. As can be seen in these pictures that these tell us about the sedimentary rocks where each layer forms a different strata or a different layer that comes together to form the rock as a whole. Right? So you can see that different layers together have given rise to this sedimentary rock. So these rocks are of different types of strata or layers of various sediments, right? So here we learnt about the sedimentary rocks. From the very word sedimentary, we mean settling down. And also that they are stratified, means they are layered. An example of the sedimentary rock is coal. So millions of years ago, forested swamps got buried in water bodies and eventually over the years due to heat and pressure under the earth's surface got converted into coal, a dark thick grey rock. Right? This coal is an organically formed sedimentary rock and has a high economic value. Right. So we know that sedimentary rocks contains the animals and plants that are dead and have decomposed. Right. Therefore, the remains of these decomposed plants and animals in the inside layers of these sedimentary rocks are called fossils. Right. So you must have seen these beautiful fossils in pictures, in movies and also in your school textbook. These are some other important types of sedimentary rocks and they are conglomerate, shale, sandstone and limestone. So now that we've learnt about the two types of rocks, let's learn about the third type. So igneous rocks after getting heat from the magma and pressure from the rocks turns into metamorphic rocks. So, this also happens with the sedimentary rocks. The sedimentary rocks, as you know, settle down on the bed of the water bodies. Even they, on receiving heat from the magma and pressure from the rocks, over the years turn into or convert into metamorphic rocks. So this process of change in the form of rocks, both igneous rocks and sedimentary rocks, under very high pressure and temperature is known as metamorphosis, right here. And these give rise to the metamorphic rocks or the third type of rocks. So taking example of coal, you know, in the very initial years, the coal is known as peat. So these are believed to have only 60% of coal content or carbon content. Over the years, when the temperature and pressure 
works on these rocks, they start changing their nature and physical appearance, right? So as the time passes, this peat, which contains 60% of coal or carbon content, changes to brown coal. And here, the content of carbon increases from 60 to 60 to 71%. And this keeps going on, so from brown coal it changes to sub-bituminous coal that consists of higher carbon content that is 71 to 77%. And the best form of coal that is the bituminous coal is believed to have 77 to 87% of the carbon or the coal content. So we understood that metamorphic rocks are the third type of rocks is formed when igneous and sedimentary rocks experiences change in temperature and pressure. So under high temperature and pressure, they change their form to give rise to metamorphic rocks. And this process, as we understood, is called metamorphosis. Right, so let's take few examples. So we know that limestone, which is a sedimentary rock, on receiving heat and pressure, changes to a metamorphic rock, and that is marble. Right? So you see there's a change in the texture. So a limestone which has an uneven surface or a rough surface on the process of metamorphosis, it changes to marble with a more smoother surface as you can see. Let's take another very comprehensive example. So talking about shale, we see that shale is a sedimentary rock, right? So on receiving continuous metamorphosis, so on increasing metamorphosis on this particular rock, how it changes to different forms. So the shale on receiving heat and pressure changes to slate. On further metamorphosis, it changes to phyllite. So on receiving higher temperature and pressure, this phyllite changes to schist and this schist on receiving further higher temperature and pressure or on further metamorphosis changes to gneiss. Nice. So we see how shale on increasing metamorphosis change its form and forms new rocks. Another example we see that sandstone which is a sedimentary rock on undergoing metamorphosis changes to quartzite which is a metamorphic rock. So now taking example of igneous rocks. We learned about granite in the last video, how we learned that it is a hard and a beautiful crystalline stone, right? So granite on receiving temperature and pressure, so under high temperature and pressure, it changes its form to gneiss, which is a metamorphic rock. So you must be amazed to know that gneiss could be formed from both sedimentary rock, that is schist, and igneous rock, that is granite. Taking another example of igneous rock, so we see that basalt, as we saw in the Elephanta caves, on receiving high temperature and pressure or on undergoing metamorphosis, changes to schist, that is a metamorphic rock. So let's picturize all the rocks together. We know that magma from the interior of the earth oozes out as lava and solidifies to form the igneous rocks. These, on getting eroded and weathered through agents like wind, rain and flowing river, get carried away from one place to another, right? They eventually settle down on the seabed. So over the years, these deposits form layers on top of each other. These layers form the sedimentary rocks. Therefore, sedimentary rocks are often known as layered rocks or stratified rocks. And also, sedimentary rocks take thousands and millions of years to form. So these sedimentary rocks on receiving heat from the magma as you can see here and pressure from the weight of other rock layers give rise to metamorphic rocks. So you see there's a cycle. These metamorphic rocks on receiving further heat changes to magma again and the cycle goes on. So you see volcanic eruption gives rise to igneous rocks they get eroded to form sedimentary rocks. They, on receiving heat and pressure, forms metamorphic rocks, which melts to form magma. And then we had the rock cycle. So today in this video, we learned about the other two types of rocks, sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks. We learned how they are formed, and we also understood the characteristics of each. 
So let's have a quick recap of all the rocks together, thus focusing on the rock cycle. Right? So we know that magma or the molten crust and mantle oozes out on the surface of the earth to form the igneous rocks. We also have learned that the igneous rocks that are formed right below the surface of the earth are called intrusive igneous rocks, while above the surface of the earth are extrusive igneous rocks. So there are two types of igneous rocks on the basis of their location. We also further learn that these igneous rocks on getting weathered and eroded by different agents like wind, rain and flowing river carries these sediments from one place to another. Therefore, transportation and deposition of these sediments happen on the seabed, right? This, over the years, get layered and on compaction and cementation, they form these sedimentary rocks. These sedimentary rocks are burial of dead plants and animals, which are also known as fossils, on receiving high temperature and pressure changes to metamorphic rocks. So these metamorphic rocks, on receiving further heat from the Earth's core, melt to form the magma. And then the process goes on. So you see that there's a cycle. All of these are interconnected and it gives rise to the rock cycle. So in the next video, we will learn about how these rocks have changed over the years, how the Earth's crust have shaped and reshaped due to various agents and how human activities have negatively impact the Earth's surface or the Earth as a whole. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.